Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, the beginning of the week, my friend Wolfie6020 put out a video on Discaculia. This is characterized by Wolfie, and I think very appropriately, as a sort of colorblindness when it comes to math and geometry. And he is proposing that perhaps this is rather common in the flat earth community. So, Let's take a few minutes and have a look at this condition, maybe do a test for it ourselves, and see whether or not this idea has any merit. So I think that anyone that has engaged flat earthers for a while will agree with me that the common denominator with most of them seems to be an extreme weakness in mathematics and spatial awareness. Quite often, they would overcompensate with posts containing lots of words, but no numbers at all. And I think we've all seen that behavior from our Flat Earth friends. While most of us personally consider the Flat Earth movement as basically the pet rock of science, Wolfie went on to explain that his opinion on dyscalculia is that this is uh, akin to colorblindness when it comes to numbers and geometry. And here's a good example. I put this image of Mount Rainier up in a video that I was uh, using to prove the rotation of the Earth. This was one of my pieces of evidence. Now, most people that would look at this photograph would realize that in order for the mountain to cast that shadow on the clouds above it, the sun had to be coming from an angle or an altitude lower than the peak of the mountain. This is not something that really needs to be explained most of the time. It's rather self-evident. But I actually got a question from a flat earther. Did I have a simultaneous photograph from the side to go along with this photograph. Now, there are two possible reasons that this could have been asked. Number one, if you're taking a cool picture out your backyard like this, you're not going to prearrange with somebody to be 40 miles away off to the side to take a side shot to show that your photograph is actually showing a shadow. There's not going to be that piece of evidence and then that gave them a, oh, well, this could be fake then, moment. The more likely cause is that they could not visualize this in their head. Looking at this photograph, can you visualize in your head how the light has to play on that mountain? I don't think this person could. They just simply couldn't visualize the geometry of the light. Anthony, if a triangle has the sides one, one and one, do you know what the angles of the triangle are? Which kind of triangle are you on about? Are you on about like a right angle triangle? The triangle has sides one, one, and one. Do you know what the angles are? Um, the angles would be, well, it would be an equilateral triangle, wouldn't it? Right. So what are the angles? <clears throat> I'm going to ask this again. If you have a triangle with sides of one, one, and one, what are the angles? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up a triangle calculator. Now, in all fairness to our friend Sleeping Warrior here, he was just having his morning tea and might not have even been awake yet. Uh, personally, I have to have a cup of coffee before I can even focus my eyes well enough to start responding to comments on my, my YouTube channel. But what leads me to believe that this is not just being not quite awake yet is the fact that he goes on to claim that Einstein can be disregarded because it's only maths. We're frequently seeing things in the flat earth community, well, that's just a diagram. That's just maths, so therefore we're going to simply dismiss it. This is a problem dealing with reality through mathematics. Now, what if we actually went over to the Dyscalculia website and read off a few things? Now, I could do the same thing, but I'm going to let him do it, simply because his voice is just so wickedly awesome. If you or your child struggles with mathematical formulas, shapes, and spatial awareness, it could be dyscalculia, a learning disability that makes it challenging to process and understand math. Now, this affects about 5% of the population, and apparently many people who have it are undiagnosed and not aware of it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put a link to this online test to see if we have the symptoms of this disorder. And I'm going to go ahead and take it myself right now. Uh, I apologize for the little flashes on the screen once in a while. That's just a quirk of OBS. So, 
Question number one. How often do you find it difficult to do mental math, often giving the incorrect change or calculating a wildly inaccurate tip? And the uh, answers are frequently or rarely. That's pretty rare for me. How often do you hear complaints that you drive too fast or too slowly, even though you feel like you're driving at a normal speed? Well, I'm quite aware of the speed that I drive. My wife thinks I drive too slowly, but I'm aware of the speed that I'm driving, and I am driving slowly, so I'm going to hit rarely on that. How often do you forget phone numbers or addresses, even just a few moments after they were said to you? Well, I have a pretty decent head for numbers, so I'm going to go ahead and put down rarely on this one. How often do you have trouble telling time on an analog clock? Well, never. So that'll be a rarely. How often do you arrive late to events or appointments? Um, I think it's actually rare that I'm on time. So I'm going to have to put down frequently for that one. How often do you have trouble estimating how long it will take to get somewhere, even if you've made the trip before? Well, that's actually pretty rare. I've got a pretty good idea how long things take. How often do you forget math facts that everybody else seems to know, like times tables or common formulas? Well, I check these things periodically just to make sure, but I've got a pretty good idea of how to calculate various things. So I'm going to put down rarely on that one as well. How often do you find it difficult to stick to a budget or keep track of your finances? Well, I'm not too bad with my finances, so I'm going to go ahead and put down rarely for that. How often do you skip numbers or read a few of them backwards when reading a long list? Well, I do have a history of dyslexia. I've pretty much overcome it by my age now, but occasionally it does rear its ugly head. I'm going to go ahead and put down rarely on that, but I suspect that I'm a little bit more frequent with that than the normal person would be, but that's why I like to go back and double check things. How often do you have difficulty reading graphs or charts? Well, really never. How often do you run out of time when completing tasks on a deadline or find that much more time has passed than you had originally thought? Well, I generally finish tests early. Um, for the most part, I get my videos out when they're supposed to come out. I haven't really been late on any of them. So I'm going to put down a rarely on that. How often do you misplace objects around the house or get lost in familiar areas? Well, if you listen to my wife, I'm the one that can find anything, and I'm actually pretty good at tracking stuff down. So I'm going to go ahead and put down a rarely on this as well. Question 13. How often do you have trouble learning athletic movements, dance steps, or anything that requires you to move your body in a certain sequence? I can't dance. I mean, I really can't dance. I tried to learn a few dances, and I'm really abysmal at them. So I'm going to put down frequently on that. How often do you get anxious when you know math-related tasks are coming up, such as a meeting where you'll have to discuss your company's last quarterly figures, for example? Math's never really intimidated me very much. I'm by no means an expert at it. I don't do calculus, although I basically understand it. I just don't have the algebra to be able to do calculus. Uh, question 15, optional. You want to receive ADD Tudes free weekly newsletter for adults with ADHD. Well, no. Let's go see what my test results are. Okay, it says here that if my score is 40% or higher, you may have symptoms that often prompt an evaluation. My score was 14%.
you guys go ahead and uh, follow the link that's in the description here. Go take this test yourself. See, what, see how you do with it. Unfortunately, there are many barriers to understanding in the Flat Earth. The Flat Earth is a movement and a conspiracy theory. They have a narrative. In many cases, at least in my experience, they simply don't want to know the correct answer. However, if this actually does have some merit and dyscalculia is a problem in the Flat Earth community, there are several things that we can do um, to try and combat it. Now, the first thing is we could talk or write out the problem. I think that in my future videos, if possible, I'm going to go ahead and write the problem or the, the, the point that I'm trying to make out and have it up on the screen so that in addition to hearing me talk about it, you can actually look at it and dissect it a little bit. You know, the next thing that we could do, and this has its own problems, is we could draw the problem out. Sometimes people have a better level of understanding when they see a, a drawing or a picture than they do when they hear the words or read them. Next, we could break the task into subsets. For example, when we're talking about gyro compasses, a gyro compass processes to true north based on the rotation of the Earth. Well, that makes sense to some people. To others, it does not. So we could start off with, why does a gyroscope have rigidity in space? What happens when you try and rotate or put a torque on that angular momentum? What would cause a torque to be put on the angular momentum on Earth? Why would the gyro compass then process to this particular direction? Using common experiences is sometimes a lot better than using abstract concepts. For example, very few people have conducted the Cavendish experiment, yet many people have caught uh, a fly ball in baseball or uh, blocked a kick in soccer. A lot of principles can be brought out with something that is simple and common, like a baseball. You have gravity. You have wind resistance. There's a lot of things that can be learned from something as simple as catching a baseball. Finally, be consistent and review these things again and again and again. People with dyscalculia are not stupid. They simply don't have a good handle on mathematics and geometric shapes. To give you an example, my mother is a very bright woman. She's a university graduate, a teacher. She doesn't understand or grasp the concept behind computers. I tried for several years to get her to use a PC. It took me probably a year and a half to teach her how to text message, email, and attach files to emails. It just was a very long process and it took a while to get through it, but eventually we did. I did notice something. Somebody gave her an iPad and she loved the thing. It was intuitive to her. She understood it and on a hunch I got her a MacBook Air. So using a different type of computer that was set up a little more intuitively, she took to it like a duck to water and now she's just fine with computers. Sometimes it's just a matter of finding the right way to get through to somebody and find something that they are comfortable with that makes sense to them. And perhaps that's the best approach to deal with this problem in the flat earth community if indeed it is a problem. So once again, thank you, Wolfie, for raising this question and prompting me to have a look at it. So if you have a second, hit that little like and subscribe button down in the lower right corner. We're still on our subscription drive with a goal of getting to 20,000 by the end of August. With your help, the channel will flourish and we can do it. So take care, guys.